we're going over the train tracks here. And by the way, I'm in the sport mode now. Yeah, suspension feels about the same though in terms of the how comfortable it is. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're gonna be going over the all-new IS300. Before we get into this video, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larch Miller Lexus here in Murray, Utah, for giving me some time with this IS. I'm gonna include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a Natch aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that goes through a six speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 260 horsepower and then 236 pound feet of torque. Now, before we go over the front end, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. First off, I love the silver paint on this particular IS. You guys can see really distinctive lines there on either side of the hood. Coming down below, we got these really cool daytime running lights you guys can see next to the headlights. Well, actually in the whole headlight cluster. <laughs> but anyways, chrome trim there around the grill and then it's like little accent piece there off to the side. And then they actually have a camera there at the top of the Lexus logo. And then when you put it all together, this is a really good looking car. Coming around the side here, we have a tire and wheel setup of 235, 40, 19 in the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see the spoke design and then the coloration as well. I think the silver actually looks pretty cool. Now, aside from that, the IS looks really good from a side profile perspective. I really like this kind of like divot there. And then notice with the mirrors are actually two-tone. You got the black at the top and then you got like the silver body painted portion at the bottom. And then notice like the chrome trim around the windows. Now here is our key fob. We have our unlock function or lock function. That is to open up the trunk and then you got the Lexus logo there on the back end. Well, speaking of trunk, we'll hold that down and boom. Now actually popping inside, we've got plenty of storage space here in the IS. That's one of the things I do like about this car is it's not the biggest in terms of overall size, but it's practical with storage. And then when you're all done, just plop that back down. You guys can see we've got the Lexus IS light bar here on the back end. And then we have our IS 300 badge. Parking sensors there at the bottom. And then you guys can see the exhaust tips at the very bottom. And putting it all together, I think the new IS is such a beautiful sedan. This is where things get real fancy. You guys can see really nice black leather here and then you get the red leather as well. Cool two-tone design. Look at the red stitching too at the bottom portion. And then <laughs> wood trim is pretty interesting. And then here is the seats. You guys can see perforated red leather here. You got a little bit of black leather there on the side to kind of continue that two-tone theme. Now legroom here on the back is really solid. You got a storage pocket right here as well. And then we've got some vents right there in the center. And then headroom's also solid. And... Bada bing, bada boom, cup holder armrest. With the front door panel, it has that same two-tone theme as the rear, and then you can see the wood trim right here. All of our window controls, we've got our mirror adjustments, memory seat functionality as well, and then you guys can see blind spot monitoring there in the mirror. Now with the front seat, you guys can see again with that red leather, and then notice it's perforated in the center portion, and then we do have all of our power adjustments on the side. Pretty normal pedals down below in terms of the look. And then you guys can see you've got like your hood latch release and then your trunk release. And then you can see there for the camera view button. Steering wheel is power adjustable by the way. Now before I dive into the steering wheel, you guys saw this button right here. It's for a rear sunshade. <laughs> it's got peasant blockers. Now actually going to the steering wheel, we have really nice leather trim all around. You guys can see the darker stitching on the center portion. We've got our adaptive cruise control with our lane keep assist, some controls for the center stack. Phone controls on the other side with our voice command controls and then volume controls as well. Paddle shifters here on the back for that six speed automatic transmission. And then you do have your turn signal light stock and then your windshield wiper stock. Now here is the center gauge cost. You guys can see mostly analog. But we do have that little screen there in the center, which we can scroll through different bits of info on the car itself. And then also when we change the drive mode, it'll show like a little depiction there at the bottom. Now in reverse, you guys can see we've got trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and yes, 360 camera view. So if I put it into park and then find that camera button and press it, and yeah, we got this cool little exterior shot and then I can change the car as well. So yeah, and then as for the rest of the infotainment system, um, overall pretty easy to uh, use, I'd say. Um, response time with the screen uh, is great. So like if you use the touchscreen functionality, 
So I think that that is also um, solid. It'll be interesting to see when Lexus upgrades to the newer um, unit, because this is obviously the older unit now, but I mean, it still works really well. So it's like, no complaints. Now down below, you guys can see what the climate controls. Interesting with the uh, whole slider function. That's definitely fun. But yeah, dual zone climate, automatic. If you guys are wondering, and then you got light radio controls down below that. Plus we got some nice like leather padding here on the dash with the red stitching and then also down below as well. And speaking of down below, We've got heated and cooled seats and a heated steering wheel. Gotta move the shifter for you guys to see that. And then here's the shifter, by the way, for that six-speed automatic transmission. This is your drive mode select. You got snow mode, stability control, and then that is your auto hold. And then this is that analog uh, keypad thing for the infotainment system. So if you don't wanna use the touchscreen function, you can use that. And then you guys can see here at the center console, decent storage space, got some USBs. Can love that two-tone design. Some cup holders right there. And then the glove box, pretty big. Now up top here, we've got some controls for the sunroof, and yes, this does in fact have a sunroof. So this is pretty loaded up for a 300. You guys can see all the options on this particular one. Now there's the base MSRP 49,930, which funny enough, I just reviewed that IS350 F Sport, and this thing fully loaded stickers for the same amount as basically a base model F Sport. So now I have to answer the question, do you get this or the 350 F Sport? Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off, and I gotta move this in a little bit. Um, but anyways, there's visibility of the hood. Both the mirrors, just do a blind spot monitoring. And throw the rest of the rear, and well, we're sitting right off, and I've got great news. So, I filmed the IS350 review first, and I noticed that there was an RX, and I found out that I'm gonna be filming said RX. So that'll be a good uh, review for the channel. It's the first time I've had a chance to see the new RX, so it'll be interesting to see what that is all about um but anyways back to this is 300 first off seat comfort's really good um this is just across the board with you know pretty much every single lexus i don't think there's a lexus that has uncomfortable seats now that i think about it so that is a big positive and then ride quality with lexus cars also amazing i've driven three today so far um the es first the is 350 second and now we are in the is 300. now what i'm noticing initially with this is this doesn't feel bad at all um, with the acceleration. Again, driving this back to back with the 350, at least on the low end, this feels great. Um, like I don't feel like I really need any more power, which I think is a big positive. I will say though, I like the steering wheel more on the 350. I feel like that steering wheel is a little bit uh, cooler actually. And yeah, I mean, so far I think this drives really well. It's smooth, it's comfortable, it's quiet. It feels, I feel like I'm in the 350 by the way. So, so far, not really noticing a uh, difference, except for the fact that this one has this really cool red interior that uh, definitely spices things up quite a bit. Let's see if the steering though feels any different. Ah, uh, slightly. I feel like the IS350 felt a little bit sharper. Again, it had the F-Sport package. Yeah, but, like this steering, this steering almost feels like almost slightly lighter, but then the biggest thing is the car, I know the turn-in just didn't feel quite as sharp as the 350. So we're going over the train tracks here, and by the way, I am in the sport mode now. Yeah, suspension feels about the same though in terms of the how comfortable it is. Ah! Okay, that's the difference. <laughs> so I did the same exact throttle input with this as I did in the 350, the 350 had enough power and torque that it didn't have to downshift that crazy to get up and move. So that's, when you when you get on it, that's where you really do feel a perceivable difference. This, it just doesn't have the same level of power as the 350. Yeah, that's crazy. Like same exact throttle input and it just goes, one car doesn't downshift all the way and the other one just goes, oh, we don't have enough power for this. <laughs> we, got, we got a downshift. So, Setting things up here with the IS300. I still think this is a great car, it looks amazing. Um, I do prefer the looks of the F Sport package, so on the 350, I think it's a better looking car on the outside, just with the few elements that it has. And then interior is identical with both the cars, pretty much. Um, but yeah, do you spend, you know, the same amount of money on a base model IS350 or a loaded up IS300 like this? I think it depends. If you're just gonna be commuting with the car and you know, doing a lot of around town driving, I think that this would feel like a better value because you would be getting more like in, like better infotainment system, 360 camera system, all that. So more interior features, right? Um, whereas 
with that 350, if you're gonna do a lot of highway driving and if you're gonna wanna have a little bit more fun with the car, then yeah, I, I would go that route. Um, that that's still it's still it's, it's, it's a tough choice but let me know which route you guys would go would you would you go for the you know upgraded engine for the same amount of money but less features or yeah i'm interested to hear what you guys have to say on that and that's the is 300. that's kind of something's up with our video on this is 300 again a huge shout out and thank you to the larch miller lexus here in murray for giving me some time with this car check out the intro in the description down below i'll see you